It's the Hot Stove presented by the Cup of Mets podcast. I'm Ian Bosniak, joined alongside by Robert Benegas and Matthew DeSantis. As always, and gentlemen, we finally have some movement on the free agent front. Yeah, we do. We got a center fielder for one year, $10.5 million, and the ex-Yankee and Harrison Bader. So it's a good, nice little wait and see signing. We know that David Stearns has been prioritizing his defense, so. Yeah, definitely. And again, you know, the Bronxville native, um, you know, kind of adds on to the outfielders that we have. But again, you know, we'll get into it. Former college teammate of Pete Alonzo, too, if you guys didn't know that. He played at the University of Florida with okay. the Polar Bear Pete. So hopefully, uh, again, I, I I love the move, but we'll get into it. Sounds good. Yeah. Harrison Bader, the newest member of the New York Mets. And uh, we'll get into all that. But before we do, just remember to give us a follow on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok. We're at Cup of Mets. Also, be sure to subscribe to the podcast, whether it be on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. So as mentioned from the outset, Harrison Bader, a New York Met, the former Yankee, the former Red, the former Cardinal, joins the, <laughs> joins the New York Mets after a really, really poor season last year. Um, despite playing above average defense as he normally does, he's one of the best defenders in the game. But, you know, Rob, as you mentioned, adds to the outfielder mix, inked at $10.5 million dollars. What do you make of the move? Where do you see him kind of sliding in? No, yeah, I mean, again, you said it best. He's one of the be- game's best defenders. Um, I love him in center field. So this kind of uh, le- leads me to believe that Nimmo is going to move over to left when Bader's in the lineup. Um, does this necessarily mean that Nimmo's now never going to play center? I'm not sure. Um, I'm, I'm, I've heard that Bader prim- predominantly hits against righties, but who knows? Maybe the Mets put, use him as a platoon player and he starts against lefties, which shifts Nimmo over to left. Um, but overall, I like the signing just because of the defensive aspect. Um, he has a great arm. Um, metrics don't lie. So, again, he's above average in all defensive categories. His base running's there. Speed is there. And he turns 30 in June. So, um, again, one-year deal, $10.5 million. Um, Listen, you know, maybe this is the outfielder. I don't necessarily think it's the right-handed bat that the Mets are looking for, but I do think it's the outfielder that the Mets were looking for um, to add on to Marte, Nimmo, and Tyrone Taylor. And DJ Stewart. And DJ Stewart. Yeah, don't don't forget Stewart. Yeah, I mean, it definitely it definitely brings up a few things. The first thing is, yeah, the Mets are pursuing another bat. Is this the other bat, right? That's question one. Um, two, as you said, does Nimmo move over to left field? We know that he's one of the game's better center fielders, but at the end of the day, he's also 30. He'll be 31. You would want to allow him to, you know, utilize his body a little bit better, move him over to left and have a predominant center fielder out there in Bader. The question for me is that, you know, in Harrison Bader, somebody who's ranked within the 93rd percentile in fielding run value, you know that that is something that David Stearns, Matt, as you said before, David Stearns has preached, run prevention. He wants to focus in on that. We saw Tyrone Taylor come in. He's kind of similar profile in terms of Bader. Where do you see, how often do you see Bader playing? Um, and do you see him as like your fourth outfielder or how do you see this roster con- configuration playing out? Because we do have a lot of similar types of players, um, despite two of them now being really, really good defenders in Taylor and Bader. But how do you, how do you see them managing playing time there? Well, I think it's going to realistically come down to they're going to shift Nimmo to a corner and it, the big domino is going to be Starling Marte. And if we get quality innings out of Starling Marte, then that would be the best case scenario for us. But like you said, uh, David Stearns is preaching defense. So, I mean, I think we'll see Bader in there like pretty often and have Nimmo in left and Marte in right. And uh, with the possibility of Stewart, coming in and out um but i mean i like the signing and like i said earlier we can always say he has a great start we can move him at the trade deadline if we're not looking too good because we all know that the mets feature center fielders drew gilbert so yeah or jet williams to be honest but but to kind of rebut off what matt was saying again i can kind of see him as like well, you can actually use him in a lot of different ways. And and again, Mendoza is familiar with him uh, with his time with the Yankees. But again, Bader could be that late defensive guy where that you put in seventh, eighth, ninth inning 
or he, like I said before, he could be that platoon guy that hits against lefties and gives Nimmo a break, whether he DHs or, or gets moved over to the left. I like the outfield how it is right now, just because you got the pop in Stewart and Tyrone Taylor. Tyrone Taylor's, again, speed, but he's projected more than 15 home runs, um, along with the you know versatility of Nimmo, and then you got more speed and Bader, Marte, and, and I'll put Nimmo in that category. So I think the Mets are lined up pretty pretty good in terms of uh, outfield right now. But again, I don't think this is the the last major league move the Mets make. They still need that power bat and uh, to solidify their lineup. Yeah, I, I I couldn't agree more. And I, you know, Matt, you said Starling Marte being the big domino. He absolutely is. I mean, he was such a key cog in 2022. You saw, I mean, every a lot of players performed exceptionally well, but when Starling Marte went, the Mets went. And last year, the Mets performed when Marte was healthy. And obviously, he fell um, ill to quite a few injuries and um, had to have a surgery this past offseason as well. But he did play five innings last night in the Winter League. Um, that was his first appearance. He also did play right field. So good signs there. Praying for not another Ronnie Mauricio type of uh, situation, right? Um, that would that would That would suck. But... Listen, the fact that Marte's playing right now, get him, get him, you know, 10 to 15 games in the winter, you know, 40 to 50 ABs, um, you know, kind of warm him up for spring training. And hopefully he's he's ready to go for spring training. Uh, and that would put together your outfield in a sense of, as you said, a Nimmo, Bader, Taylor in center field. And then you have Starling Marte and right with DJ Stewart as your left handed bat off the bench, as well as an outfielder. Now, additionally, right, we said, is this going to be the final bat move, right? Bader is not that type of hitter. Last year, he posted just 70 uh, weighted runs created plus, only worth one war, really ugly numbers, um, 232, 274, 348 slash, hit just seven home runs, but did manage to steal 20 bags with the new rules implemented. So... Does this take the Mets out of the J.D. Martinez situation now? I think that that depends on how many years J.D. is looking for. I don't. I think the Mets are, are still in the one-year deal department. I would really like to see them, you know, get a guy like Brandon Woodruff in on a two-year deal or something. They're going to need to do something with the pitching staff. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think we're going to see. Montgomery or Snell. I mean, I never wanted Snell. I would have been more comfortable with Montgomery, but even in Managa, I'm not too sure how that, I don't even think that's going to happen either. So probably it seems like David Stern's just throwing darts at the board and he's going to see what sticks. So, I mean, we'll... I mean, I mean, Bader coming off the year that he did got ten and a half million dollars, right? And JD Martinez is coming out. Some people are thinking that he may get offered a two, potentially three-year contract, which would be a little wild. But, you know, yeah. I wouldn't do that from the Mets standpoint, right? But when you look at it, you kind of said, all right, the Mets maybe did need a plug, maybe one more hole in the outfield, right? And while J.D. Martinez is not an outfielder anymore, much of an outfielder, he can still play a little bit of outfield if you need him to go out there for a game or two a week, right? So that's why I mentioned J.D. Martinez at first. Obviously, the years and the contract they, that he's trying to get implicates it all, right? If he wants two or three years at a high AAV, the Mets are going to say no anyway. But I think that kind of narrows down the Mets' options when it comes to the bat to a guy like, you know, Justin Turner. And, you know, obviously there have been rumblings that the Mets have uh, interest in Turner. Matt, you and I spoke about this previously. I just think that Justin Turner kind of makes the most sense now that you see the outfield playing out the way it is, right, with the addition of Bader and Tyrone Taylor, outfield kind of seems set. Justin Turner, to me, would be the perfect addition with the Mauricio injury. He could be that guy that could be your designated hitter, can play a little bit of third base, can go over to first and spare heat a day or two if he ever needs, right? And again, he could play third, which is what the Mets need. I think the Mets kind of need to focus in on Justin Turner. And I know, Matt, you said you were barking at the potentially 20 mil that he was requesting. But I think now after seeing, as I mentioned, 
two times now, 10.5 go to Bader. I don't know. The market is just in a crazy place. Players are getting paid, and I think the Mets should pay Justin Turner. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, again, and, and he played a little second base too with Boston last year, but not that we need him to, but I think Justin Turner also makes perfect sense. You know, he plays natural position as third base, and plus it just gives us that, that much-needed right-handed pop that the Mets have been looking for the last couple seasons. Um, and honestly, I'm a big believer on just bringing him back. You know, he started his career with the Mets, or excuse me, he, you know, he had a little run with the Mets uh, back in the day when we were in high school. But, you know, again, I love his grittiness. I love the way he hits um, pure right-handed bat. I think he'd be perfect in the five, six, seven uh, spot in our lineup just to solidify and give get get us a little deeper uh, one through nine, especially if guys like Marte stay healthy and then, you know, you add – you mix and match with guys like Bader and Tyrone Taylor. Um, but again, you know, I do like J.D. Martinez. I just think two to three years is a lot for him. Um, if the Mets could just find a way to finagle and maybe add like a player, a one-year deal, 20 mil with like a player option or like a team option um, to go along with that, then I think J.D. Martinez would also be a perfect fit. But again, just looking at the Mets infield right now and how with the Harrison Bader signing, how the Mets – are configuring their outfield. I think Justin Turner is the way to go as well. Yeah, Justin Turner last year drove in 96 runs. That's the most he's ever driven in in a singular season. Think about that. Think about all those incredible years in L.A., and he drives in 96 runs at age 38 years old for the Red Sox um, and produces and is trying to net a contract worth 18, $20 million. I don't know, Matt, I want to ask you personally, would you pay him that money now knowing and seeing the market and where it is? Yeah, I would 18 to 20 million. Cause we saw Harrison Bader got 10.5 and he was healthy for like 35 games last right, two, year, two seconds. Yeah. Right. Like, and he, well, what only had like 40 RBIs. I don't know. I'm not I'm not gonna knock it until I see him. I know that what's his name? Uh David Stearns. He loves his defensive guys. So at least he's not gonna he's not gonna he's gonna be making plays out there. Yeah. Yeah. And and didn't, didn't Kiermeyer get ten and a half as well for a year? Yeah. I'm not comparing players, but because yeah. Kiermeyer's probably one of the best center fielders like defensively, but which, but which, like, sucks because I'd probably rather Kiermaier. Yeah, I'd probably rather Kiermaier over Bader as well. Um, if, like, if they were gonna go that route, I feel like both guys could have been had for the same price or very similar. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, they listen. They, the the outfield kind of seems set right now. I, I, <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't, I don't know. It, it just kind of comes down to what is the price point when it comes to a Justin Turner? What is the price point when it comes to a JD Martinez? What are the opt outs? What are the, what are the clauses? And, you know, just the, you know, you, you said it, Rob, I mean, looking at the the configuration right now, you know, if you head over to fan graphs and looks, look at the projected Mets depth chart, they give you a lineup, right? They have Nimmo and left. They got Bader in center field. Your bench is looking like Nervaez, which we'll get into. Mark Vientos, Joey Wendell, and Tyrone Taylor. If the Mets can go ahead and add Justin Turner, they can take DJ Stewart, put him on the bench, or sure. they could uh, use his last remaining option, which he does have, have one more option left. They could use that last remaining option. You can give the likes of Lindor, Alonzo, Marte, McNeil and Nimmo insurance, like you said, Rob, make the lineup deeper with a Justin Turner, bring him in there, and then you can either start Vientos in the minor leagues to start the year, or as I mentioned before, you have DJ Stewart use that option, and you go into the season with a bench of Narvaez, which is, as I said, we'll get into, um, a DJ Stewart, a Joey Wendell, and a Tyrone Taylor, or if not a DJ Stewart, a Mark Vientos. I think that that's the best way to look at it because this lineup would look a hell of a lot better with a Justin Turner in it. Look, it looks look, honestly, and it's sad to say it looks a lot better with Harrison Bader in it, but no, yeah, it comes to show that we haven't done that much this all season. 
Yeah, but I also think it's kind of almost a sneaky good off season. And I know that's like, mm -hmm. you know, we have a reclamation project in Luis Severino. We got to see what Adrian Hauser has. Um, you know, Tyrone Taylor didn't have the strongest year last year. Bader, not a good year last year. Some of the relievers, Jorge Lopez, Michael Tonkin, they kind of struggled. So, but they're guys with all upside, right? And I think that, it, and they all have their qualities that they can help right now, whether it's run prevention, whether it's, a guy that has a lethal, you know, slider like an Austin Adams or something along those lines, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the market's definitely moving. And something else, I mentioned it twice just before, Omar Narvaez, we'll touch upon this briefly. The Mets are looking to trade Omar Narvaez, apparently. Uh, him and his remaining $8 million, they would assume, I, I mean, I would assume Tomas Nito would be yeah. back as the Mets' backup catcher. Mm -hmm. What do you think about packaging uh, Omar Narvaez in like a mid-level prospect? Uh, nothing crazy, but uh, Omar Narvaez in a mid-level prospect for a reliever. Build out that bullpen a little bit more. I think I think personally that's what they're trying to do. I mean, Tomas Nito is only set to make $2 million next year. Um, and again, he's better defensively than Narvaez, in my opinion. His framing is better than Narvaez, in my opinion, and he's familiar with the pitching staff. So I don't hate uh, that they're shopping him, but I hate the fact that we signed him last year, to be completely honest with you. And again, I get it. Billy Epler was the GM at the time, and, and we didn't have no David Stearns. But in reality, they're, Nito and Narvaez are, in my eyes, are two of the same players. Um, again, Nito got kind of the shit under the stick last year, but I would love to see Tomas back in that backup catcher role and just to let him, you know, ease in and just to, just be here in Queens. Because again, I'm I'm sure last year he felt a little pressure. I hated knowing I that hate, he had an option. I hated him last year. Yeah, um, yeah, because he couldn't hit, you know. But his he's there for lick. defense. Couldn't hit a lick. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I agree with Rob in terms of Narvaez. That was a waste of resources last year. That's 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 a shit deal. Like especially when you had Alvarez right there, man. Like, like come on. You may like, as well have kept James McCann. Exactly. Like, why the fuck did you pay him that? And like, you you brought up a point saying, are they gonna try and package him with a mid, like a mid level prospect? I mean, what is Narvaez even worth? Like a baseball and a hot dog? Like, I mean, <laughs> we gotta look. Yeah. You got you gotta look around at the team. Like that. five hot dogs. Yeah, yeah, maybe five. I mean, <laughs> listen, you gotta you gotta look at the you gotta look at the teams that a are in need of a catcher but b you know i think that even though we saw a really shit omar narvaez last year mm -hmm. i think we can also admit that he was injured he's been injured the last two seasons he's had injuries he he played 84 games in 2022 and he played just 49 games in his first year with the mets i'm not saying he's about the uh, about the bounce back fangraphs has him pegged only to play 76 games but they do have him, uh, his slash being 244, 323, 370 uh, with 95 weighted runs created plus. I mean, listen, I think it's a no-brainer if you could trade him and get an, and get an arm back. Um, but I definitely think that a team that is in need of a catcher would bring on Narvaez, especially if the Mets say, hey, hey we'll eat half of the $8 million that's owed to him. You know what I mean? Along with a prospect, exactly. I think the Mets can get a reliever back for him. Yeah, the Mets should wiggle him in front of the Marlins' faces with, like, Marco <laughs> Vargas and be like, yeah, what's it going to take to get uh, Lizardo? <laughs> They're so that dumb, would, man. They had the opportunity last offseason to get Lizardo. Should have just sent Beatty for Lizardo. Yeah, until Beatty no, hits Yeah, until yeah. Beatty hits 25 <laughs> home runs this year and shoves it in your face, uh, Matt. Yeah. All right. And we got Joey Wendell so, hitting two home runs. Let's hope. Well, the best part about being on a podcast and now you just you're you're documented. Yeah, you're documented. <laughs> we got the receipts. We got the receipts. I mean, no, listen, at, we got receipts. The, Trust me, I would love to see Beatty kill it. Yeah, but he was mad. He did not look good at all last year. So, yeah, but we'll but see. do you still trade bait or think about trading Beatty, even though we have no Mauricio? No, nah, probably not. Right. right? Like, no. uh, I wouldn't. I mean. It's but like at that point you could have like money could have gotten you a third baseman. Lizardo's yeah. under team control for like another like five seasons. 
So well, yeah, like, but again, again, there was a different, there was a different group running, running the show last year as well, you know? Yeah. And that's another thing to take into account. Um, again, right now, Rob, you said it, Mauricio down, Beatty goes nowhere. Beatty is your third baseman and you have to yeah. hope for the best. And you look at that seven and eight hole, Alvarez, Beatty. We're going to yeah. put up some big numbers this year, man. I'm going honestly- I'm, I'm to be the optimist here. I bet if I bet if the Mets called right now to the Marlins throwing that same trade proposal, Beatty for Lazardo, they would hang up. Honestly. Absolutely. <laughs> why would why would they even answer? Yeah. <laughs> Come so on, I remember man. the Well, Marlins. isn't there new personnel in Miami now? Like no more no more yeah, King the guy. It's that, it's that guy uh from the Peter, Rays. Peter Brendix. Bendix. I think it's Brendix. It might be Bendix. Brendix. It's Brendix or Bendix, one of the two. Same shit. He's a straight yeah. Harvard. He's a straight Harvard grad, like someone that's just all numbers, all data. Um, <laughs> hell, you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda. I mean, but again, I, I think that you know, again, with a Turner in the middle of your order, hopefully, great sophomore seasons from Alvarez and Beatty, a bounce back from your McNeils, from your Martes, and the Mets will have offense cooking. You know. It's the pitching then that we'll have to worry about and we'll touch upon next. All right. So when it comes to the starting pitching, the Mets obviously are in need. They have plugged two holes thus far, adding Luis Severino, Adrian Hauser via trade. They're rumored and linked to Sean Manaya, the former uh, Oakland Athletics, San Diego Padre, and San Francisco Giants. Uh, this past season, Manaya pitched in 37 games, only made 10 starts, however, struck out 128 and 117 and two thirds of an inning. Um, when it comes to his stat cast S numbers, well above average in uh, K percentage, hard hit percentage, off speed run value is in the great category. Had a very interesting year last year, right? 444 ERA, but had a 390 FIP worth 1.1 WAR. Manai is an interesting case because he's projected to start 28 games this upcoming year, tossing 151 innings, and the previous two seasons with the Padres and athletics respectively, he started 30 games per year. So this past year, obviously there was a little bit of a different sequence in San Francisco, but what are we thinking about Sean Manaya maybe on like a one or two year deal worth 14 to $15 million per with an opt out after one or something along those lines. Cause it seems like that's the norm for any pitcher that can throw a baseball right now. Yeah, I I would be more than for that. Um, We need pitching. And I think that he's shown to uh, be an innings eater. Uh, so we definitely we have some we have a few slots in our rotation. So I would hundred percent give him a shot, one or two year deal, opt out after one, just to uh, to see what get him into the building, see what Jeremy Hefner can do with him. But I would a hundred percent be cool with that. Um, I mean, listen, you know, I, I like Sean Manai when he was on Oakland, he was a stud. Um, you know, he had that, he had that, uh, he had a couple of good years with them, honestly. Um, and again, I, I remember him seeing him, him pitch last year with San Francisco and he was very, uh, what's the word? Not erratic, but again, like he had an inning where he went one, two, three, and then he had another inning where he loaded the bases with three walks, you know, but at the end of the day, the Mets need guys who could stay on the field, especially pitching yeah. again, like, and again, he's only 32. I'd rather him than over a guy like Ryu just because of the age factor. Um, but what pops out to me is that he only made 10 starts last year, but pitched in 37 games. So that's like another Adrian Hauser type pitcher who can make a start here and there, but also come out the bullpen or maybe open a game. Um you know, but again, I, I I would give him the one year, two year deal worth fifteen million. I mean, that seems like the famous number. Frankie Montez got sixteen million. Yeah, right. And, what you know, made made Luis Severino look like a steal, uh, for thirteen million. But but again, if if the Mets mm-hmm. are going to continue to add pitchers that that stay on the field and just eat innings, then I'm with it. And um, as long as they get outs and swings and misses, um, then there's nothing you can be mad about. I mean, this guy doesn't walk anybody. He only hit three guys last year, or eight guys last year, three guys the year before. Um, as long as he just keeps the ball in the ballpark and the defense does his job, I'm good with it. He was he was a bit erratic last year. I, I do agree with you. The one thing that I did notice, and I don't know if it was because he was pitching more often, but his fastball velo went up. Uh, it was at the highest it's been uh, 
you know, if you want to round up around 94 miles per hour, his fastball, his fastball was really, really uh, solid last year. Hitters just hit 239 against the big issue with Manaya, you know, along with his health and him and his walks is essentially him being able to not allow hitters to make contact on the slider hitters hit 284 against the slider and along with four home runs he only struck out 20 batters on the slider so that's definitely a pitch that he needs to learn how to uh put away hitters uh the sinker cutter same type of deal but he is a six pitch pitcher and that's something else that i really liked about him his fastball has some nice rise to it as well and you know when you're looking at the current mets rotation you know rob you brought up uh, you brought up Hyunjae Ryu. We know that the Mets had have have had internal conversations about Ryu, but what Ryu only started four games last year, right? And he's also yeah, yeah and then, and like six the year before. And how old is he? Now, uh, so last year he started eleven, fifty-two he's innings. Be Thirty-eight this year. Last year he started eleven games. Yep, mm-hmm. he started eleven games, fifty-two uh, innings pitched. Uh, a three point four six ERA and a four point nine one FIP and, and how zero point he? four WAR. He's thirty six years old. That's the thing. So when you look at the current Mets rotation, knowing that you have a wreck project in Severino and Hauser, you're hoping for a good, solid, healthy bounce back year. You got to say to yourself, who's the better bang for your buck? Who are you most likely going to get 130, 140, 150 innings from, right? And that would probably be Manaya at this point in his career over Hanjai Ryu, especially after we've seen Manaya make close to, if not 30 plus starts uh, or 30 plus appearances over the last three years. So when it comes to the discussion between those two, I think it's a no brainer because I think if you add Hanjai Ryu, you're asking for trouble. And you're asking to see Tyler McGill, Jose Budo, Joey Lucchese. You're asking to see those guys earlier on in the season than you would if you would bring on a guy like uh, Sean Manaya or even like a Mike Clevenger or even a Michael Lorenzen, something along those lines. Yeah, for sure. And uh, after seeing Frankie Montes get $16 million, like I'm, I'm more than happy with that Severino contract. If they would have came out of the – jumped out of the gate, and gave Montes sixteen million dollars. Whenever that was, when we signed Luis, I would have lost it. Oh yeah, Mets Mets Twitter would have freaked out. I would have lost my shit. Now what about what about Giolito signing with Boston, eighteen and a half million dollars, two years with an opt out after one? He mm-hmm. he sucked last year. I yeah, I think I think that's more of like a one year prove it deal. Exactly. Um, here, here's here's your here's your bread. Um, go out and show that you're worth this bread, and then next year when you opt out, we'll see if we can sign you to that three to four five year deal that you're looking for. The only thing That's that he has, opinion. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that he has going for him is a a track record with Chicago, and B is 29 years old. That that's it. Aside from that, dude, I mean, it's it's his youth that got him that price that that uh the money that he got like. If he was if he was thirty two, he wouldn't have gotten eighteen point five. No. And what were we talking about earlier on the season? We were earlier on the earlier on the winter. We were talking about what ten to fourteen million dollars for a guy like oh Giolito, right? Oh my gosh, this market has exploded. I can't wait to look at our free agent predictions. Like I probably didn't even get any of those right. Like, <laughs> I actually I actually think Rob's doing the best right now. Oh, that's good. Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll we'll do an update on that, on that yeah. soon. Um. Maybe maybe next year we could like keep score or something. Keep track. I mean, we definitely yeah. can keep track still. You know, uh, winter's yeah. still going on. We got our lists, and we'll now, bring now it. Now we're but... talking pitchers, though. We're talking pitchers, though. Did you see that Imanaga is expected to make like or get like a hundred million? Like, in dude, in in this market, if if teams are projecting him to be a two or three. Pitcher in the rotation, he's definitely getting a hundred million dollars. You know, yeah, but a guy I, that hasn't pitched in the majors, bro. Well, that's I know. the same thing as Yamamoto, bro. I know like, that's the Crazy. same situation. Yep. Like yep. they and the Dodgers gave him what they gave him, and he three and a quarter. He has the same odds as Kadai Senga for uh, Cy Young and Al Cy Young. Matt, why do you say Kodai's name like that? Kadai. Kadai. Could I? It's almost like could I? 
Michael could die. Almost. Michael could. Michael could dire. Michael could dire. Like Remember, off season Maybe we should try to get him on the pod. Yo, but that's what I'm. Well, yeah, we could get him on the pod, but that's what I'm. But that's what I'm saying. I don't know when I said this. I don't know if I said it to you, Matt. I don't know if I said it to you, Rob. I don't know if I said it to the both of you guys. But 2014, going, into, we had higher expectations in 2014. We went in, didn't have a good season. We were like, all right, we're gonna make moves. They only ended up bringing in Kadir, really. And then 2015, players played out of pocket. The pitchers developed, and they went ahead, went on a little Cinderella run, and went to the World Series. I'm not saying that that's going to happen with the Mets, but I'm saying sometimes the low-key off-seasons can prove to be really valuable. And listen, I think that we all want to see another big signing. Hopefully that's a Justin Turner. Uh, hopefully that's another, like a Sean Manaya. Hopefully they can cap off the winter with you know two pieces like that. But a guy like Imanaga... At this point, seeing what the Mets have done thus far in the offseason, I'm not paying Imanaga over $100 million. I'm not paying him $20 million per year. That's that's a no-go for me. I was pretty yeah. shocked. I was pretty shocked, though, yeah. to see on the flip side what uh, Wu and Matsui got from the Padres. They, yeah. didn't get, they didn't get as much. I mean, granted, the relievers, but they didn't get as much money um, – as many people expected, while Yamamoto and Imanaga are getting more. Same with Jung Hu Lee. Grant, they all play different positions. And then you have Yariel Rodriguez, who I'm curious to see what that contract looks like. He's rumored to be in talks with the Blue Jays right now. So there's a lot going on. But now we're just now we're just kind of talking talking chop here. Um, yeah. La- lastly, I mean, this is on Mets related. Uh, what do you guys think about that Chris Sale trade? An Boy. extension. They, uh, they, and, they did and, a deal today. Yeah, two years, thirty-eight million bucks, with an eighteen million dollar option for the twenty twenty-six season. I got rid of his deferred money. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I think it's actually like a very much like a, I. I feel like it's been a while since we see the balance trade in baseball, and I thought it was pretty balanced to be honest. Because yeah, Von, Chris, what, who they send over Vaughn Grisham. Vaughn yeah. Grisham, and he didn't really have a, a place to play in in. Atlanta so now he goes to a Boston team where he can probably take over that starting second base role so I don't who's, know. That, who's Boston shortstop they still, got, they still got Trevor Story or Trevor Story plays second now they still have Trevor Story but how many games does Trevor Story play No, I, I'm, I'm just sure. wondering because like again like yeah. Braves I know had RC you know they had Swanson before him so I agree with you like yeah. he could finally play Vaughn Grisham could finally play every day but isn't he a shortstop or he is. He can also play second okay. base though. So I don't I don't know. Oh, maybe yeah. maybe him and story interchangeable. I'm looking it up right now. But I actually Pretty thought sure Atlanta I mean played him a third too. Two times. They That's yeah, good. they did. And current no. Vaughn Grisham currently is slated to be their starting second baseman. Their other second baseman, Pablo Reyes, whoever the hell that is. <laughs> it sounds like backyard baseball, except that was Pablo Sanchez. Pablo Sanchez, yeah. Greatest player yeah. of all time. Yeah, he was the goat. You want to talk about goats? You want yeah, to talk he, about he was, them. Pablo he was the goat. goat. He was Jose Altuve before Altuve was Altuve. Definitely, hundred percent. That's a yeah. wow, great comparison. You like that? Yeah, I, did. I actually do. Yeah, backwards hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what I want, but what I wanted to say, I mean, granted, I don't give a shit. Screw the Braves, but I, I think there's a decent amount of risk that comes with with this trade. Not on what they gave away. I'm talking about financially. You know, you're taking on Chris Sale's remaining contract plus you know the 38 million dollars that's going to be owed to him over the next two years plus that club option the guy started two games in 2022 nine games in 2021 um didn't pitch in the covid ridden season hasn't pitched hasn't made 30 starts since 2017 made 20 starts last year 430 era i don't know again the braves rotation strong as hell you know strider bryce elder charlie morton Max Freed, but I don't know. I think it's I think it's pretty risky financially for the Braves, but who am I? I would love it to bite them in the ass in the end. No, definitely. I mean, again, he's been injured the last couple of seasons, so we'll see if maybe they're looking for him to bounce back this year and have that bounce back year. Um, the extension kind of came at me like surprisingly. Same. Um, I thought it was going to be. I would have like seen a... him pitch first, then I would have offered an extension. But go ahead. No, I I thought it was going to be like a two year, two million dollar contract. 
you know, with the yeah. way that, oh. <laughs> with the yeah. way that the Braves push shit. I thought I was seeing yeah. things on my phone today. I was like, wow, they're they're committing thirty eight million bucks over two years to to Chris Sale. Look at this. Was that like nineteen a year? Uh, eight, eight, something like that. Nine, nineteen and thirty eight divided by two. Nineteen, yeah. Yeah, nineteen. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Awesome. <laughs> we can do math as well as talk yeah. baseball. <laughs> I would hope so. We work at a school. <laughs> <laughs> it is. All right. All right. Don't 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 give up our uh, our mo here. Yeah, we're, right. I know. Yeah. All right, boys. Anything else as we wrap up episode ten? I'll just hopefully um, maybe next time we have some more stuff yeah, around, definitely. not even just Mets stuff, just like around the league. I want to see, uh, I want to see the hot stove like heat up a little bit. I mean, it hasn't really been hot at all, so that's about it. No, yeah, I mean, I couldn't couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, you know, these there's these subtle moves here and there, but I'd really like to see like one day where there's like this team makes a move, then another team makes a move, a trade happens, three more moves happen. Not necessarily for the Mets, but just in general for the league. Um, my, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say like a hot take right now. I think if the Mets miss out on Turner Martinez, I, I do think Gio Urshela becomes a New York Met. Um, I'm not just saying that because he was on the rundown today, but, but I really do believe it's, a, it's a good fit. Um, he, def, he's defensively, he's great, and he played with Lindor out in Cleveland. So, and he, and he had played in New York once before. So, I, th- I think they do swing and if they swing and miss on those two guys that i just named i, I do think Gio Urshela becomes a mat he had his best years in new york and he knows mr mendoza as well mm-hmm. exactly and That's again cool. you know lindor and urshela man down that left side in cleveland so yeah. i i do see it as a he, as a fit yeah he was he was on a rundown today as potential third base depth but we uh kind of cued in on uh, justin turner there for a little bit yeah mm-hmm. no i think I agree. I think I think Jay Rochelle would be a good fit if we miss out on those two. But again, the bat would be would be lacking. Hmm. But I'm in I'm in full agreement. I'm hoping the next time we hop on for episode eleven here of the hot stove, uh Justin Turner, Shalmaniah, sub someone, maybe both of them, or just hopefully the Mets can make a couple moves, you know. And um you know, it's 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 January fourth, so we really only have a little over a month to go before pitchers and catchers report. Stearns still has a little bit of work to do. Harrison Bader was a nice little addition today to fill up that outfield. But again, one more bat, one more arm, another couple pieces to the bullpen in terms of insurance. And uh, we'll roll into 2024 before we know it. And the season will be here. And uh, it'll be on to season three of the Cup of Mets podcast. Um, Yes. And before we wrap up, just a reminder, be sure to... Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter. We are at Cup of Mets. Also, be sure to subscribe to the podcast, whether it be on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And for Matt DeSantis, Rob Venegas, I'm Ian Bosniak. Thank you very much for joining us. And for that, good night, everybody, and let's go Mets.